I guess this is my 34th year of doing plays by Shakespeare and having gotten to do most of the canon. And ironically, this play, which is relatively popular, I've never done it, not even a staged reading, never directed anything. And so, uh, so you go into it and you see the line of action, you see this beautiful construction of the play. We know Shakespeare as being this great poet and this, this guy who has an ability to turn a phrase, so this, the, all the to-be's or not-to-be's, the A2 brutes and so on. But he is also, in reality, this incredible structuralist. He has this architecture that's really unbelievable. So he takes all of us through on this ride of expanding and contracting areas of greater and lesser energy and different tempos and so on. And you realize you're really taken into a world that's incredibly rich just in and of itself without you having to do anything. So there is also this idea of how to plummet into the verse and try to get it. And it's mostly a verse play. I mean, all the words that any of the major characters speak are in verse and how to get a hold of it. And the verse is relatively regular compared with, certainly compared with some of his later plays. Nor heaven nor earth have been at peace tonight. Thrice hath Calpurnia in her sleep cried out, Help, O, oh, they murder Caesar. So what happens is that I come prepared to do larger political warlike drama of a guy who basically trod generations under his feet and, and suddenly we're not doing that play. There will be in these 10 years a thousand productions of Caesar around the world of, of biting, sarcastic, power mongering, untrustworthy politicians. So we don't actually have to do that one because a thousand other productions will do that. We're doing a different film that's much more internal and much more about that pivotal moment where you make a decision actually to be yourself or where you let go of yourself and dissolve into all the kind of pettiness and power structures and you listen to the wrong sets of thoughts that take you away from a simplicity and an inner nobility. And I think that playing that story, the story of the inner world of a human being, changes entirely how, how you play as an actor. And we're actually going to drop into not the inner world of the characters so much, but the inner world of ourselves, where there is a Caesar. And in our own moments, we have that incredible inner voice, those moments of conscience, without which we really do kind of lose our way. You know, they are, as Caesar would talk about being the northern star, they are our northern star, they are our guide. And uh, so as we approach the film in this way, instead of it being uh, what it normally is, we actually leave room for that to exist. I mean, that is as much a presence in the film, it is for Brutus, it is for Caesar. Both of them ignore the inner voice. In this way, have you well expounded it? I have. When you have heard what I can say, and know it now, the Senate have concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. If you shall send them word, you will not come. Their minds may change. They don't listen to their wives, and they also don't listen to their own inner conscience. And he is doing what he always does, which is asking questions and not giving us the proper answer. He doesn't actually say, all right, here at the end of the play, like Star Wars, we're going to, we know Darth Vader is bad, John Williams' music tells us so. <laughs> we know Luke Skywalker is good, although he becomes problematic later on. So, but that's not the case here. We do. We actually do love in this film. And, and you have this character of Calpurnia who, who does introduce this notion of love. And there was in, in our filming of it there is an affection in that scene that is, is not often played. 
is usually full of bombast and sound and fury signifying nothing at the end. But that's also where we internally depart from love, then that also begins a precipitous decline. And uh, always, isn't it true? Always, when we leave love, we get in big trouble internally. Every single play, some more successful than others, but every single play is relentlessly driving towards a real understanding of our condition. And he doesn't pull any punches. The, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but, but also the profoundly evil and, and really the sublime, the, the, the transcendent sublime is also contained in these plays. So if you're watching the film and get a, a taste of that in yourself, that's certainly worth the price of admission.